And let's get the investment angle on all of this as we're joined by both Rebecca Walzer and Danielle McLaughlin. It's good to see both of you and talk to you once again on um, the investment side of vaccines, Rebecca, if we can start there. There are, as I said, coming in days, and today's one of them, I suppose, when the market is up, when you see people are, are optimistic about that. Does it affect or does it affect the way you look at your kind of investment outlook over the next six months or so, how much progress we're making on vaccines? I mean, it does. And I think that people do get, investors get really nervous, Connell, about, oh, this is, the cases are spiking. And so, you know, what's happening? And and so when you have a positive day of, you know, like going to, you know, phase two or phase three trials like we did with Moderna last week, obviously you see green days and, and, and investors getting a little bit more confident. I, I just have a little bit of a cautious note on, you know, banking all of our return to normalcy on a vaccine because um, it is a very fast pace. And if it doesn't work out, What's our second plan? What's our plan B? And that's what was a little bit concerning to me on the long term and short term here. Yeah, I can, I can get that. I mean, I think our plan B is already in effect from an investment point of view, Rebecca, at least. And that's the right. Federal Reserve. <laughs> right. And the mm -hmm. fiscal stimulus in the Congress, which we were just talking about. So can that yeah. uh, can that hold us over, I suppose, is the question, uh, Rebecca, from now until we get to the vaccine? The fastest vaccine I've ever seen, Connell, is four years. So even if you could shorten that to half time, I understand that, you know, the representatives of the companies on, on the Hill today are not saying that they're, they're not cutting corners. But um, I have never seen a vaccine develop faster than four years. I have, I have research. I can't find one. The four years is the fastest. So if we're going to cut it down to this year, less than a year, less than two years, um, something's happening with that. And, and so I hope for all of our sakes that it works out, but I don't think we should plan on federal stimulus for the for the next however long it takes. What if it takes two years, Connell? We're gonna keep getting federal stimulus? We don't, money doesn't grow on trees. We don't have this money. This is not possible. So we need a better plan B than just federal stimulus or vaccine. We, we have to figure out, is this virus something that we can deal with outside of a vaccine without Federal Reserve by actually reopening the economy? Mm -hmm. All right. The other thing that's happening today, and I bring Danielle in on this, uh, former Vice President Biden is in Delaware and he's unveiling another uh, portion, I guess, of his economic recovery plan. Uh, we had uh, Peter Ducey, our reporter, who's there earlier in the show, Danielle, and he did the quick math on it. He said over the last three weeks, Biden has unveiled plans that add up to about three trillion dollars in additional spending. A lot of that, of course, through proposed tax hikes. So will there be, and we, you know, we're talking about investments here and the economy here, uh, some pushback or some blowback on that in terms of whether that is something that you can really sell in this environment with the economy the way Rebecca describes it. What do you think? Well, I think there's going to be different responses from voters as opposed to markets. So markets don't like t uh, tax increases. They like tax cuts. We saw that in 2017, of course, with the Trump tax cuts. Uh, Wall Street and corporate America love them because they 80% of those cuts and um, those came back into investors with share buybacks and other things. I think actually the pandemic has created more awareness generally amongst voters about the need to get infrastructure going because Biden's talking about infrastructure, to increase education in pre-K3 and pre-K4 so that working parents can find a way to actually get back into the, into the labour market. Um, I actually think that even though there's a huge amount of spending on the books as it relates to Biden, we're already seeing that with the pandemic. We saw from the 2008 stimulus that that did create jobs, that did build roads and bridges. And I think what we're seeing with Biden is really uh, an example. Well, look, you look back at 2008, Biden's trying to do what Obama did in 2009 and use federal, federal stimulus to right. bring the economy back. What's your take on this, Rebecca? I've said it a couple of times during the show uh, today that I think that to some extent there's, at least for investors, an idea that we don't necessarily think Biden right away will do what he says. He may very well want to raise taxes to pay for all these programs, but he may not be able to or be inclined to do it right away, depending on how the economy is. But what if he did? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I am going to have to disagree with uh, Danielle because I wouldn't use Obama's recovery as an uh, example of a recovery. I think it was the re weakest recovery we ever had in the history of America. And certainly uh, taxing people is not the way to get a recovery. Um, Biden's tax policy is a disaster for both the individual taxpayer and also all of American corporations and investors. Um, th there is not enough rich people in his planning because of the $3 trillion that Steve Ducey talked about today, right, Connell? That's just... 
what he's been outlining. He has yeah. already said that he's for a Medicare for all. We already know that that comes with a 10 plus trillion dollar tax. There's just there's not enough of rich Americans to pay for all of his rich American programs. So either we have to rich, make the whole country rich so everyone can pay for these taxes or everyone's going to be poor together. This right. is not the president that will what? lead us through a recovery. Absolutely not. Quick final word, um, Danielle, maybe before we move on. You know, Obama's stimulus uh, gave back and created 1.6 million jobs a year for four years. We built 42,000 miles of road. We got our water systems cleaned up. Uh, we've expanded broadband access, which is also a very important part of economic growth. Uh, you know, Republicans like to say that Obama didn't do the job that he said he would set out to do with that nearly $800 billion stimulus. But you see the trend lines. You see how he brought uh, unemployment down, GDP up. Federal spending does work, and I think it'll work again under a Biden plan. All right, Danielle, thank you. Rebecca as well. Um, next up, we've talked about...